Welcome back everyone. This is Richard Claiborne with my instructor Matt Dozo. Today we're going to be demonstrating the Bendix King KLN 94 GPS. I'm going to fire up. And what brand of GPS is this? This is a, uh, a KLN 94 is the model. Uh, it's a Bendix King brand. It's uh, IFR certified. So you can use this for IFR approaches. Okay, first our, our entry screen is just going to be inputting the barometric setting. We'll just say it's 29 or 75 still. Probably has dropped a little bit with the storm coming in. So we'll just hit enter. Passes all, all this seems to pass. That looks okay. We'll hit enter. 5th of May, present uh, present position. Cool scanning traffic. Sounds good. Zero Romeo database Kilo expired the on uh, the 10th uh, of February, so this database is legally out of date for IFR flight. Two nine at Cold and we're on a VFR flight today. Yep, so we're, we're no issue whatsoever. If we were up in IFR, we could use it for situational awareness, but we couldn't use it for, uh, for actual uh, approaches and navigation. Um, okay, so let's say I want to set up a flight plan just to get me from present position to Mount Comfort. I'm going to come over here with my large knob, and I'm going to scroll over to the FPL, flight plan uh, chapter. There's FPL, starts off at zero. Looks like there's already a flight plan in here. I'm just going to delete all of these off. And you're pressing what button to delete? Uh, good question. That's, I'm hitting the clear button, and then enter, and then clear. It says delete VHP, enter, then delete that one. Enter. So we've got a, a fresh flight plan here. So I'm going to enter in KMQJ using the rotary knob. The large knob controls where my cursor is at. The small one controls what. Well, the small knob controls what function that cursor position does. So for instance, I'm going to turn the small knob to the right. Starts off with a K. I need to move the cursor over to the right one. So I'm going to use the large one. Then I'm going to use the small one to give myself an M. Large one to the right, small one to the right to get a Q. Large one to the right, small one to the right to get a J. Looks right. I'm going to hit the Enter button. It's verifying Mount Comfort. Is that what you want to go to? I'm going to hit Enter. So I've got a flight plan now to go to Mount Comfort. I could put anything. I could put 99, I think 99 points in one single flight plan. But I just want to go direct there. So I'm going to highlight Mount Comfort using the large knob. I'm going to hit my Direct To button. And it's going to say, do you want to go direct to Mount Comfort? I'm going to hit Enter for Yes. Now, it's telling me that I've got a desired track of 316. It's flashing at me because it wants me to come over to OBS-1 and input it into OBS-1 over here. So I'm going to twist my course here to 316. Now, it doesn't serve any other function other than to remind you what course you're supposed to be flying. So right now, it's saying that Mount Comfort is 14.4 miles away. Our ground speed is 132 knots. Our desired track is 316 degrees, and our current track, TK, is 008. So I basically need to turn the plane about, uh, what, 6, uh, 40, what, 40 degrees to the left? Uh, 50 degrees, I guess, to the left to get my desired track to equal my current track. All right, so this is NAV chapter, page 1 shown down here where it says nav and then one. If I want to get a different page, I use the small knob. This will give me nav. The very first page is a moving map. There's our moving map. Magenta line is direct to Mount Comfort from where we originally hit direct to Mount Comfort. If I want a new magenta line, I can hit direct to, enter, and now it gives me a fresh line from where my current position is at. There it is. Looks like I still need to turn to the left just a little more to get over to Mount Comfort. And if you hear your ears popping, I am descending. I can't see anything in front of me. Yeah, with the sun in our yeah, eyes. Yeah, it is crappy out there. We'll get below the sun. will get below the clouds in a few seconds here. But so that's pretty much it. I'll generally keep it on either the moving map or this page. This little needle here is just like your CDI on OBS One. If it moves to the left, that means our course is to the left. If it moves to the right, our course is to the right. The arrow, the little triangle, is our airplane. The line through it is our course. So if I go a little to the left, this course should go to my right. So I'm turning left now just to show you that our CDI is going to start moving to the right. Fulton County traffic, so 657, left down, uh, left space for 2 niner. 
Niner, Fulton County. And that seems to be working. Down here it says 0 .36, 0 .39, 0 .41, climbing. That's how many miles off center we are right now. So we're about a half a mile off of the center line of our course. Makes sense, it's moving out to the right because my course is more to the right. So I'm gonna make a right turn here, start heading a little bit more towards the airport. The other thing that you can see on there is that flashing M on the right-hand corner. That means there's a message. The furthest left uh, button here is MSG, not to be confused with Chinese food. Adjust nav course to 309. So it wants me to come over here to OBS1 and twist that to 309. I'll hit message again, brings us back to the main page. We're about 10 and a half miles to the uh, east. I'll make a position call. And let's see here. Right now we're showing, the on the bottom here it says 3142. That means we're right now, if we fly a 314 course, that's, that's our current bearing to the airport. So if I start swinging myself out a little bit more to the north, it should start lowering because my bearing is going to start going from northwest to just west. So I'll head just due north just for a few seconds here. And our bearing two, Mount Comfort, should start lowering. Any second now, there we go. Click down to 314. The further north I go, the more it's going to be due west. That's the main, main parts on it. I guess the only other thing that I could say on it would be the functionality of using the nearest button. If you happen to lose an engine, you come over here to NRST. It's going to bring up a, uh, a, a menu. We want the nearest airport, so we'll hit enter for APT. It says the nearest one is Polk Field. That's Greenfield. It's a 087 bearing, so we turn right almost 90 degrees, just due east from us. And it's 2.2 miles away. If we want the next closest one, we come to our rotary knob, we pull out, cycle one to the right, next closest is Mount Comfort. Go one more to the right, next one's going to be Post Air in Shelbyville and uh, Metro. So it just kind of goes progressively further away. So that's a good functionality to have if you ever lose, a, lose an engine.